What the reverse is, is that it turned everything around. So that now the ball is on the other side, the socket side, and the socket is on the arm side. So the way this works is that the ball is sitting on the opposite side and the socket is here. And when you go to use your bigger muscles, they lock the socket onto the ball and then it rotates around the ball. It doesn't need the rotator cuff to compress it and hold it steady. The larger muscles by the design will pull it in and then can rotate around this ball. It gets its name for the fact that it reversed the ball and socket, but it also changed the way the shoulder actually moves so that it essentially you don't need a, a normal functioning rotator cuff to make it work. For many of us that do a lot of shoulder replacements, it will easily grow to at least one third of our surgical options. And if you have a practice that's specialized where you have to do revision surgeries for really tough problems or people that have been operated on before, it can be 50% of all your shoulder replacements will be a reverse prosthesis. So this is not just a small little aspect. This is actually becoming, uh, this is impacting up to 50% of the people that have to have a shoulder replacement for arthritis in their shoulders. So it's, it's been a dramatic change in the United States in the last eight years.